Hello. Today we're going to talk about setting up a panel for cutting out of a piece of material that's larger than the panel. And what we've got is a King Air Pilots panel. It's just reloaded here. And you can see that the work zero, the file origin, is at the lower left hand corner of the panel. And I've got the panel laying on the material just to illustrate how we're going to set this up. We're going to be cutting across some bars, so we've got some sacrificial material comprising of a paint stick, nothing magic about it, just a paint stick, that spaces the material off of the mounting bars so that we can cut across them without cutting through the bars. We need to match or synchronize the Panel Pro Work Zero with the file origin. In order to do that, I'm going to physically move the Panel Pro to the place that I want it to be zero and then tell Avcam how to set it to zero. So I'm going to move this panel off and I've marked the position that I want to be zero right in the lower left hand corner. So I'm going to move So it's roughly over that X. The first thing that we have to do is set our Z0. And so I'm using the three key to move it down. Now we're pretty close. I'm switching over to the mouse wheel, setting 10 thousandths per click till the end mill is visually just touching the top of the material. Now I'm going to hit the Z key to bring up the Z dialog. I'm going to hit Z again, and it asks Reset Work Z0, and I'll tell it yes. That's the same as hitting this button, Set Z Work 0 to Current Z. It does the same thing, the Z, is just a, the Z key is just a shortcut. I've got the cut depth at minus 0 0.150. Normally this material would be about 90 thousandths of an inch. We need to make sure that we're clear through the bottom so it cuts cleanly. And so if there's any flex in the material that it also has some room to push down and, and cut through the material and overcome the flexing. The other settings, Z retract level, this is the level above the place where we just set Z0. When it moves to its next cutting position, that should clear any clamps or obstructions. The go slow height is set at a tenth of an inch. So anytime the Z is below a tenth of an inch, when you jog, it'll move slow. If it's above that, it'll move fast. We're just going to do one pass. Normally, we do a one pass through anything that's equal to or less than the diameter of the end mill. The Z feed rate is set at 8 inches a minute and that's the speed where it plunges straight down. Normally in the bigger cutouts it ramps down in but in the tiny mounting holes and things like that it has to plunge straight down so it has to go quite a bit slower. Dwell, now if we had some material that was fairly flexible like maybe a doubler or something like that you may want to add some dwell at the bottom of it and that only applies to holes that are approximately the size of the end mill. So it stays at the bottom there a little while to make sure it cuts all the way through and over and again part of overcoming the flex of the material. So now that we've got the Z set up we'll exit out of that. I'm going to move the mouse up a little bit or move the move the router up just a little bit so it's clear of the material. Now I can jog and you notice it jogs slow and now I can just hit the R key and that brings up the set X and Y to zero. I hit OK and so X and Y are zero. Z is set at 0 0.03 right now. I can hit the zero key and it brings the Z rapidly to zero. If I hit the 7 key, it brings it rapidly up to 0.75. If I hit the 9 key, it just moves rapidly up until I release the key or it reaches the end of the travel. 
If I hit the three key, it always moves at the feed rate down. So I can hit the four key to move it left. I can hit six key to move it right. Eight key moves it up in the Y axis. Two moves it down in the Y axis. I can move to a particular position. For instance, move to zero and then exit. And you want to make sure that the Z is where you want it so you don't scratch the surface or wreck your end mill or something. And you can reset it using this. The other thing that we want to watch out for is that we need, we've got a mounting bar roughly in this position. We want to make sure that the mounting bar does not keep these slugs from falling out cleanly. So we can use the move to mouse position just to put it in between. And we can see that our mounting bar is pretty much in the right position so it won't keep those uh, slugs from falling through cleanly. If they just set and balance on top of that slug, they could jam the machine, they could drill down through it and start spinning on the end mill, which would be dangerous. And so make sure that your mounting bars do not keep the slugs from falling down cleanly. So with that in mind, all we need to do is simulate. And the simulation just builds the tool paths and checks for any errors in the panel. And from there on, all we get, need to do is hit C for cut. And now that it's been simulated, you can see that the cut cut the file button is green. That means if we hit that, we are ready to cut. Now on the uh, cut the DXF file dialog, or the cut dialog, we have several settings. These need to be set before it's simulated because that locks in the tool paths. If we want to change something, for instance, this normally is going to be set to nearest. So we'll Start somewhere on the lower left hand corner of the panel and proceed to the next nearest entry point. If we had a series of doublers or something like that, one right on top of the other or one close to each other, you would probably want to set that lower left to upper right. So to reset that, you need to reopen the panel and now we can't cut the file because we've gotten rid of the tool paths and now we can set the cutting order and if we want to simulate it again to set the tool paths we're ready to go now you can look on the bottom it says with the current cutting speeds i've got 31 inches a minute of feed rate which is just a little bit strong typically you might be looking at 20 25 inches a minute says it's going to take 6.6 .6 minutes to cut this file. So the next thing is dry run. This makes all the moves, but it keeps the Z axis up at retract level and it inhibits the spindle from turning on, the spindle and the coolant from turning on. And uh, this can run at a little bit faster rate. And if you've got an expensive blank, you want to make sure that it's going to cut properly. You may want to try this dry run. The other settings are before start. Now, if you did not want to start at the zero entity, which is the beginning, you can select a different one to start at. For instance, I hit select, and now I hit selected that circle as a starting entity. Now it says starting entity is 20. So if we cut the file now, we would get a warning that we're not starting at zero, which is the normal starting entity. But knowing that that's what we wanted, we would just acknowledge yes. Parts mode is just if you've got a jig or some stops set up where you're going to make multiple parts, you can set that and it inhibits some of these warnings. So after it's done, the normal default is just to stop in position the z-axis will raise and the router will turn off. But again, if we're making some parts, we may want to move off to the side to enable 
clamping so we could click move to and then enter a coordinate where we'd like it to go. When we open this uh, dialog up, it these boxes fill in with the coordinates that it is currently at. Or we could have it move to the home position when it's all done. The other things is end mill diameter. I got 0.123. I've got a single flute end mill in the router right now that tends to cut just a little bit on the small size. A eighth inch nominal end mill, but I've got it set at 0.123 so the holes don't get a little bit undersized. I typically recommend having finish cut checked that just cuts the path twice. So let's simulate it now with finish cut. See, it does once, twice for every path. And that cleans it up and it gives a better finish and a more accurate diameters. Enable holding nibs is for outside entities only. If you've got a line that is drawn in the cyan color and holding nibs enabled, it will have it will place a holding nib in that position. This is the simulation speed. Typically, you just leave it go at full speed. This is some data on the cut. It's traveling. Its rapid traverse distance is 165.9 inches. The cutting distance is 256.8 inches estimating uh, about 10 minutes of time along with the finish cut. So with that in mind, we're all ready to cut. I'm not actually going to cut this out. At this point, you would uh, click cut. Now, right now, I'm not at zero position. Again, if we click cut now, it says starting position does not start at zero, zero. We can either acknowledge that I have set zeros, but it does not have to start off from that point. It's just a reminder that we need to set the work zero. I thank you very much for listening.